Welcome back to Analysis. The power struggle in Egypt reached a new turning point this week with the start of the trial of deposed President Mohamed Morsi. The trial was immediately adjourned following disruption in the courtroom that overwhelmed the presiding judge. The handling of the trial, where Morsi stands accused of conspiring with Hamas and incitement to kill protesters, has attracted widespread condemnation from anti-coup activists and Brotherhood supporters. But supporters of the coup welcomed the court's hearing, despite the fact that there is no definitive legal framework in which these decisions have been made. Monday's session began with Morsi strongly denouncing the trial as illegal and repeatedly refusing to recognise the court's authority. In a separate court in Cairo, there was a rejection of the Muslim Brotherhood's appeal against the banning of the organisation last September. This leaves the way open for the government to move in and liquidate the party's assets. If the charges against Morsi are upheld, he will face life imprisonment, and that's a decision that could seal a ban on the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood for the foreseeable future. So what will the verdict mean for the future fate of the Muslim Brotherhood? Joining me in the studio are Sabah al Mukhtar, President of the Arab Lawyers Association, and Mohamed Sudan, Foreign Relations Secretary of the Freedom and Justice Party. On the phone is Dr. Dennis Sullivan from the Middle East Studies Department at Northeastern University, and on Skype we're joined by Daoud Abdullah, Director of the Middle East Monitor. Welcome to the programme, everybody. So, um, Sabah, can this conceivably be a fair trial? It's not, it cannot be, because uh, if one look at it in context, we have a situation where there is a, a coup d'etat, despite the fact that people don't call it a coup d'etat, but the end result is that the government have taken steps, every step, every conceivable step, to really sidestep all the role, rules of law, human rights issues. They banned the parties, they banned the media, they've arrested people uh, haphazardly, there are tens of thousands of people arrested. Uh, uh, military has taken over and, and one of the Americans, I think it was one of the senators, said if it, if it quacks like a duck, if it swims like a duck, then it is a duck. And this is what we have there. So this is the context of it. Then you have, in addition to that, the way that the trial has been carried out, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the crimes that were, he's accused of committing has not even applied to the people who have, in theory, committed it. For instance, the soldiers, the, the Republican guards, or the, the army who were the army officers, none of them is being charged. They have gone uh, up to the president, which he would not have been the one who issues the orders, but no one else is being tried. So on the format, on the substance, it is questionable, and the whole circumstances is questionable. I think it's condemned not only by the people who are supporters of Brotherhood, or the, there are human rights organizations in the world, although sometimes they have to be careful what they're saying, but they have, everybody is very apprehensive about it. They said that is going to be a, putting the judiciary on, on, on test, uh, like uh, Amnesty International, but at the end of the day, in reality, politically, to be politically correct, you cannot accuse the judiciary of a nation of being wrong, but this is what seems to be happening in Egypt at the present moment under this government. So, Mohammed, uh, what about the other decision that came out of the courts in Cairo, which was that the, the, the Brotherhood's appeal um, against its banning was, was turned down? How significant do you think that is? Actually, it's something like uh, uh, those people, you don't understand what is the uh, mentality of the Muslim Brotherhood. We used to work with the Egyptian people, among the Egyptian people, since 60 years old then we never need like a permit to support the people, to help the people. And the idea and the mentality of the Muslim Brotherhood is not something um, you have it in your hands. It's something like, an, and it's a thought. And then we always deal with the thoughts and you believe in this kind of thoughts and you transfer it to generation. And then if they stop it, then they cannot interfere with the hearts of the people, with the believing of the people. Then it doesn't make any kind of difference for, for the Muslim Brotherhood movements, either in Egypt or whatever other side in, in other countries. Mm -hmm. Then it doesn't matter. But it looks like very bad. They are going to freeze our money. They are going to freeze our headquarters in, 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 all, over, in all over Egypt. But this is going to make a lot of enemies from the Egyptian people, especially the poor people, which they were used to have this kind of support from the Muslim Brotherhood. Then it is much more enemies. They're going to add it uh, as soon as they start this kind of uh, military coup in Egypt. 
Uh, Dad Abdullah, let me just ask you about, about that. Your, your take on, on the point that Mohammed just made, that the kind of legal banning uh, of, of, of the Brotherhood can't stop a political movement and may in, may in fact produce a backlash from, from, from its supporters. Yes, let's take the, the first point, that um, whether or not this, uh, you know, by the stroke of a pen in, in an office in Cairo or in a court, that, uh, you know, this, this movement, which is so rooted in the Egyptian psyche, and in society can be eradicated. Uh, this is wishful thinking. I mean, this has been done before in 1954, and it did not work. And, and, and so it's not going to work this time because it, it is clear that the movement has become much stronger, more entrenched, more popular, and that is demonstrated by the fact that it won five different elections since the fall of the, the overthrow of the Mubarak dictatorship. So that's a measure of its strength. So to, to assume that this, you know, by a stroke of the pen, it will happen is, is wishful thinking. And let me point out that even the Minister of Interior himself recently acknowledged that they have reached the, the, the second tier of leadership, you know, the first tier in, in, in prison, the second tier in, in, in prison, and still they have not been able to stem uh, the, the, the tide of protest and resistance against the coup. Uh, yeah, and some people close to the Brotherhood say it's not just the second tier. They've reached even the fourth tier of leadership and, and, and still they have not been able to, to stop or have any impact on, on, the, on the resistance to the coup. So um, I think for the future, we are going to see continued protest, continued resistance and a continued assertion for the right to, to uh, for the restoration of democracy and the legitimate rule in Egypt. Okay. Um, Sabah, I mean, the, the uh, Egyptian judiciary um, became very politicised in the, in the revolution itself. Lawyers were a part of the, of the revolutionary movement. Is there any sense that uh, within, the, within the legal profession itself, there's unhappiness about how it's being used in the current circumstances? Well, one has to understand that the judiciary that is in existence now, and even in the last year of, uh, before Morsi was arrested, is the same judiciary which was created by Mubarak. It's the same judiciary that passed all the sentences in favor of, the, of Mubarak, whether it was the election, whether the killing of people, whether the arrest of people, the, the, the uh, uh, emergency laws. So it is the same judiciary. And this is part of the problem that uh, Morsi's government faced with the judiciary. That's why he had to overcome it by issuing constitutional orders and what have you. So the problem we, you have is in Egypt within ju the judiciary is endemic. Now, that does not mean that every judge and every person is in that, in that league. There are a lot of judges who are unhappy with what's happening. However, they are the lesser important. They are the ones who are marginalized or pushed to the side. And they are the people who are uh, not in control of the, what's happening now, whether it's showing orders of arrest, whether it's trials, whether it's, it relates to criminal trials, or indeed the civil one, like the, the, the one relates to the, to the assets. So there is a problem within the judiciary in, in, in Egypt. However, I think because it is no longer a Mubarak regime, although it is still similarly the same thing we replaced uh, Mubarak by Sisi, however, the fear which used in, to be engendered under Mubarak is not there, but contrary to what has been said now, I think the problem we have in Egypt now, for the first time, as opposed to from 1950 something, 54 onwards, the first time that the media, the system, the government, and the people in Egypt are being polarized against the Brotherhood as, and being demonized. So there is an attempt to try and change public opinion in Egypt because the Brotherhood used to get a lot of support, now they are reducing the support. Uh, Dennis Sullivan, let me see if I can just uh, ask your opinion about this. Do you think that the, the, there is any possibility of um, the Brotherhood being able to mobilise sufficient support to be able to break the momentum towards uh, sort of establishing the coup authorities for good? No, uh, I, don't, I don't think they can rise to that level of mobilisation. Uh, I, think, I think we're stuck in this... Uh, in this uh, Civil conflict, I'll say. I won't, I won't raise it any higher than that. But I think um, uh, I, d I didn't get to hear the, the, the previous comments, but I believe that uh, we probably all agree that there's this schism uh, that is deep uh, and, and pervasive 
and it's uh, it's hard to say how deep or how extensive the support for the brotherhood is i think it's probably in some ways it's probably stronger than it was before this coup um because there were a lot of people who probably weren't very pro um, brotherhood but they were definitely against uh the mechanism of of removing uh president morsi um and yet you still clearly have um a growing number of people who are anti brotherhood so it's it, I don't I don't see anyone telling us how bad this division is um but it's extensive but it I I don't think it'll ever get to the point where uh, they can overcome um they can overcome the military uh putsch or or coup. Okay. Mohammed I mean you must have a different different take on this. Do you think there are some perhaps instances I mean like in uh, in recent days the the very popular um satirical TV show run by Basim Youssef um, told some jokes about Sisi and was immediately taken off the air, and I believe he's now had to leave the country. Do you think th things like that send a, a signal beyond the traditional supporters of the Brotherhood that something is badly wrong here? I think that the, most of the Egyptian people were like an absent mind while they were very, very attacking, not only Basim Yusuf, but the majority of the private and the official uh, um, media in Egypt, even the, the official also. But actually, the, um, in the era of Morsi, he was trying to learn the Egyptian people something about democracy. And then he always tell the, their office, let them do whatever. They will learn gradually what is the democracy, what the reality of democracy. But I think that he didn't know that there is some kind of conspiracy, including the media, with the judiciary, with the um, army, with the external supported for the coup. They were planning since uh, uh, February 2011 about how to uh, demolish, actually, the, the democracy in Egypt, which coming after the revolution, or they destroyed the revolution um, uh, of the January 25th. And, and um, what happened that the, the now, after the, the coup, they, they, and they already shut down, the coup shut down like at, at least seven um, uh, TV channels uh, belong to, it's against the coup, actually, it's not just Islamic, but it's against the coup. And then the, the, the Egyptian people still know that, okay, the, those people are not okay, they are always talking about against the secularism and the, uh, and the, 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 the uh, liberalism, something like this. But now I believe they start to wake up to understand that the way is no democracy anymore. There's no free speech anymore. Here is the way. Even even Basim Yusuf, which uh, CC uh, and 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 I think the coup authority uh, or the conspiracy authority tried to using him against not only uh, uh, Dr. Mossi but also the all the members uh, of the Muslim Brotherhood and the Freedom and Justice Party and all the uh, the alliance against the the anti coup before the coup too. And then now I think that discovered the reality. What is the truth? Even Basim Yusuf, when he just touch Sisi, then they stop them. That is the way. Either you will be with us or you're going to be out. Mm. No democracy anymore in Egypt. No free speech anymore in Egypt. Mm. This is the reality. I think now most of the, those people which I'm telling that they were like a medium victims in Egypt, they start to switch to be in our side and said to be against us. Okay, let me just go back to Dennis then. Dennis, do you not see uh, uh, that there's a possibility perhaps of, of, a, of a broader shift there of the, of the Brotherhood being able to appeal beyond its core, uh, core supporters when, when, I mean, there's, there's I think 30 million people watch the Basim Yusuf programme. I mean, that must send a signal to, to wider layers of Egyptian society that there is something fundamentally amiss. Well, there's... A there's definitely, there's definitely, um, that, that, that's, that's, that's all true, but, but as I say, it, it's hard to measure mm. how, how much, uh, the, the shift will go against, uh, El Sisi. Uh, for instance, um, I, I think it was Max Fisher, a Washington Report, uh, Washington Post reporter mentioned nearly half of Egyptians support, uh, suspending Basim Yusuf. Well, I don't know. I, I I don't know where he gets the statistic, but but um, he must have done some kind of research, or maybe there's some polling going on that 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 a great deal of support uh, uh, is behind uh, this uh, crackdown on freedom of speech. So, 
it's pretty pervasive. It's extensive. But again, as I say, I think we're in this this transitional period where even the people who don't like what El Sisi and what the military-backed government is, is doing, they're still going to blame a lot of it on, well, this is Morsi got us there. So you're still going to find people who side with Morsi, as I mentioned in my previous comment. I think you'll find a lot more people are against El Sisi because of all of these activities, mm-hmm. including the Bassam Yusuf, including the crackdown on te- television and newspapers, um, but also, you know, even these when these judges resigned over uh, over not wanting to participate in the anti Morsi trials. I mean, these are their trials; these are their courts, and they resign. Mm. Um, that also is an indication. But I I don't feel you're going to find the judiciary <laughs> um, um, re- uh, resigning en masse or or even taking uh, recusing themselves from from these. Cr- they'll just find other judges to uh, to to put him on trial. Okay, uh, Dow, Dow Abdullah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the time frame here, because you know, I guess you know, uh, many people are, are watching to see um, how quickly um, Egyptians kind of exhaust their faith in the coup authorities and um, begin to turn against them. But do you think that can happen within a time scale that will prevent them forcing through a set of kind of sham elections? Well, that- I, I think what is happening. It, it, you know the, the 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 discussions right now within the what is called the co- committee of 50 for the the, the uh, drafting of the co- the new constitution. Uh, there, there is a huge debate taking place right now about immunity for the military officials. You see in in, in any f- future uh, uh, political setup, and if they had the confidence. You see uh, uh, that the, their actions were correct and popular and legal. Why, why, why the need for, for immunity? Back in 2012, this is one of the charges they brought against President Morsi when he, he sought you know, uh, powers to immune himself because he wanted to deal with the judiciary. Well, they're doing the same thing today, you see? And, and when we, the, 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 the political debate, moreover, is one of the, 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 the drift is one of extension of the so-called transitional period that they promised us. They said, you know, we're going to have a short transitional period and then we're going to have elections. Well, now the, the, all the discussions in the media in Egypt, you know, is, is, especially that close to the government, the implicit uh, 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 demands, as it were, for what an extension of this transitional period, because there's an uncertainty. Mm. The CC is not in full control of the of the agenda, we, 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 we see whether or not he would be, you know, uh, competed against by by Sami Annan, for example. You know, um, what is happening within the military? All mm. of this is very, very, very uh, vague at the moment and uncertain. And hence the reason it is very likely that we would not have elections in the near future. Okay, let me put those points. So, do you agree with Dowd's estimation there that they're, they're kind of they're too insecure to call uh, quick elections? Uh, I tend to agree with that, and they are going to find reasons either in law or in format so that they don't have. But I think in terms of trying to find out the position, what is the position there, as was referred to by, by Dennis, uh, in my view, I think the public, the young people, the, the people who are Mr. Average, who are not party members, who are not involved specifically in politics, they're totally unhappy with the, with the current regime, with the military and CC and what have you. They're still being uh, uh, fed hatred for the Brotherhood and for Morsi. But I think uh, they are still, see- they are, those people are seeing the, the reality of it. The problem we have are with the politicians, the, the political parties. All the liberal movements, the leftists, the, the communists, the uh, uh, Kefaya, the Nasserists, all those people have actually who have found themselves, they thought they have popular support. They found they didn't have popular support when there were elections. So because they lost the election, they, had, they were uh, 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 really bitter and they were poor losers. That's why they have adopted the line they, they have adopted. Now they, they find it difficult to come down from their horses. So you still have the body of politics, the ones who have access to media and newspapers, they are taking the position anti-brotherhood, uh, uh, still not talking about the government, mm. while the public opinion, the universities, all the young people, all those people are actually 
uh, taking a position against the government, but they are still not supporting Morsi or the Brotherhood. But there is a general feeling of injustice in Egypt. Among everybody, they, everybody knows, including the military, including the judges, including the, the lawyers, everybody has a sense of injustice because this government has done much worse than what Mubarak did in his time. Well, that's an interesting point. I mean, let me just put this to you because it's clear that the Brotherhood on its own has a, has a considerable body of support in, in Egyptian society. But if it's to get to the point where it can uh, tilt the balance against uh, the military government, it needs to win over a section of those people who at the moment are saying we're against uh, CC, we're against the military government, but we're also against the Brotherhood. It needs to break down that wall between the Brotherhood and its supporters and people who don't like CC but didn't like the year of Morsi's government either. Is that something that you think is in the strategic thinking of the... Of the I think this is not now. This is not the recent status. Actually, that was before the, the August 14th before attacking the Raba and the Nahda city in because most of the Egyptian people were like an, uh, media victims because every day they are insulting the president, insulting the foundations of the presidency and, and then they are victims just listening for those channels and then they don't know, then they, they, they never heard about what is the privileges of the new government, what's democracy, they don't feel it. And, but after they, they shut down all the channels and then they, uh, they see the bloodshed in the street, killing people, thousands of the people in one day and, and arresting thousands, almost 20,000 people now behind bars. Most of them like in university professors and doctors and engineers and high class people. And, and those people not only belong to the Muslim Brotherhood or the Freedom Justice Party. No, the majority of those people now, they are just a liberal people. They are not belong to any kind of political parties because they discovered the truth, they discovered the reality of the status in Egypt. Then those people, they have relatives, they have their families, and they start to move to the other side. This is the point. Now if you talk to any people, then you feel that the, the, the economy is going down. The freedom, the free speech is going down. There's no democracy. And, and then they feel what is the difference between the era of Morsi and this kind of new era, which is it's typical, same, with the Mubarak era and maybe more worse than Mubarak era. There is no judiciary. They feel that the judiciary is feeling in a very, very bad shame, which they are they seeing. What's the difference between the trials? What is going on? They, how they, they are now arresting the, the small girls mm. and they are not belong to any kind of political party. Okay. Just let me, let me bring Dowd in. Dowd, uh, how, do you, how do you read? Do you, do you think that, that, that Mohammed's right in how he describes the, the, the shift there? That, um, or, or do you think maybe that the point that Sabah made is that some of the political, the liberal and the Nasserite figures are now detached from a base which um, isn't really following them? Well, I, I think it's a, it's a gradual process. One should, you know, not sort of exaggerate that it's a, a groundswell, but it is taking place. Take, for example, those who initially supported the coup uh, in the political, you know, from the what they call the, Nas the National Salvation Front. People like Amro Khalid and uh, Amro Hamzawi, sorry, Amro Ham Hamzawi and, and, and da Khalid Dawood and, 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 and El Baradi. Al Baradi recently, after all this crackdown, he said what well, that the, the freedom that the Egyptian people were, you know, hoped for on on July the twenty fifth, they have not okay, realized. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stop you there, Dad, because that's all we've got time for. But uh, thanks for joining us, and do you really join us for future episodes of analysis. Yes. Okay, thanks.